Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. Tony Storm's music hits, and out comes Mariah May disguised as Tony Storm, which sounds good on paper. The problem is she looked so much like Tony Storm, it didn't get a reaction. People, I think the fans thought it was Tony. People just confused. Like, why? We just saw her beaten bloody. Why is she just out here the same as normal? And she gets to the ring, and she's. They, they finally start to figure this out. And there's like a low level booze, and she's standing there and not saying anything. And Tony Schiavone says, and I quote, Well, speak, bitch! Come on now! And the other announcers are horrified. They were fall. fucking horrified. Excalibur and Taz were caught completely off guard. They gasped. <laughs> yes. They had a nervous giggle. They tried to get him to just please calm down. Yeah. He apologized. <laughs> I mean, her behavior has... It, 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 he was upset. He was upset. It's upsetting behavior that she's done here. So she's doing her promo. It's very low-key, trying to be, I guess, a horror movie villain, kind of? She's kind of monotone. She's getting the what treatment. It was all so easy. I was having so much fun. I wanted to see how far it would go. And she wants to get to Wembley to kill the horse in front of as many people as possible. Tony, I never loved you more than when you're on your knees screaming and crying my name. And she vows to win at Wembley Stadium. You know, these fans just did not give a fuck about this. The what chance? There were we want Ch Tony, no we don't chance. And other than that, they just sat there and gave her the what. And I didn't think about this, but Paul Fontaine brought it up in the Observer Live thread. And he may be right. So... I was certain that in the end, Tony Storm was going to turn on Mariah May. Because if you watched this from the beginning, it's like Mariah showed up and she idolized Tony. And Tony browbeat her and she held her down and she treated her like shit. And, you know, no matter what happened, they pushed Tony as a heel, as a heel, as a heel. She would face all these baby faces and they would still push her as a heel, even though the fans were cheering for Tony. And I was like, I can't understand why they won't turn Tony babyface. The fans want her to be a babyface. Why won't they turn her? And my conclusion was, she must be turning on Mariah. And so Mariah will be the babyface going into Wembley. That's what I thought. And as it turns out, Mariah turned on Tony. And Paul noted that, you know, if you watched, and we talked about it every single week, are they baby faces or heels? One week, Tony and Mariah are doing baby face comebacks. The next week, they're total heels, doing terrible things to the baby faces. It's like one week, they're heels. One week, they're baby faces. One week, they're heels. One week, they're baby faces. Fans chant for Tony no matter what. Tony's the one who's over. And, you know, after all that, Mariah turns on Tony after they'd all made up at the last pay-per-view. Yeah. And his point was kind of like, did a heel turn on a heel? Like, the fans clearly, you know, we always talk about baby faces and heels and having clear-cut baby faces and heels. And you had that in the opener with MJF and Will Ospreay. One of them is clearly the heel. The other is clearly the baby face. It's the same thing with Mercedes and Britt. I mean, Mercedes, before every segment now, is with the Bucks, so you know she's a heel, Brit's a babyface, and then you had this segment where, who's the babyface? Who's the heel? What's going on? And Mariah jumped her last week, and she came out this week, and she got the what treatment. So she ended this promo by saying All Elite Wrestling is all about Mariah, and let's be honest here. This storyline from day one has been all about Tony. Tony is the one everybody cared about. Tony is the one that they all got behind. This worked because of Tony and her gimmick. And I don't know if people care that much about Mariah May as a heel attacking Tony Storm after all that. Maybe it'll be different next week, but it certainly didn't seem care. They didn't give two shits this week. So we'll see. From Collision. Arkady interviews the Bang Bang Gang, who deny that they have been stripped of the trio's titles. Chris Daniels then comes in, the babyface authority figure, and says, quote, It's not fair, but these are the rules. 
Except they're not. <laughs> we already saw it last year with MGF and Adam Cole. So under threat of suspension, they turn their belts over, but they're not afraid of the patriarchy, calling them a guy with a father fetish, a 16-year-old TikTok kid, a stepmom from Brazzers, and a lizard. Wow. Harsh words. Those are harsh words. Harsh words. And your main event, Kazuchika Okada versus Swerve Strickland. This was exactly <laughs> like I could have had a dream of this match, and it would have been exactly this. Swerve trying his best. Okada working at 10%. Nothing happening match. Yeah. Bucks run in for the disqualification so nobody has to lose. I described it as a big double nothing cheeseburger with a hot order of extra nothing on the side. Wow. Yeah. And it it's one of those, like I've seen Okada matches that go 60 minutes and the first 10 minutes is like this and then it gets better after this. This is just the first 10 minutes and then yes. they did a DQ. Yes. And once I re learned they were doing a DQ, I was actually okay with it. I wouldn't have done anything either. <laughs> so my big complaint is afterwards all the uh, Blood and Guts guys come out and brawl. And it's revealed that Darby Allen is the first, fifth man for Team AEW, and they fight. But if if, the, if if you were just going to have this be the blood and guts build and not do an actual main event, which is what they did, then Okada should not have come out alone. He sh should have come out with all of his team, and Swerve should have come out, or uh, uh, yeah, Swerve should have come out with his team as it stood. Then you have Darby make the save at the end, like he did anyway. Uh, it, it it just felt like an afterthought. It felt like they were they were. They were it was an afterthought. Well, it was a big match without a finish. No, I mean, the build felt like the afterthought. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, so not the best blood and guts build I've ever seen. I wouldn't say the build felt like the afterthought because it did end the show. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did have a bit. I, I figured they would do a giant brawl with everybody getting involved in everything like that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We got blood and guts, and I think people are, like, super into it because it's blood and guts. But I guess so. I mean... Taking out that it's blood and guts, just the build for it. I mean, is anyone super excited for this? We got the acclaimed in there, and hope Darby doesn't kill himself. Okada going at ten percent. I don't know what's on the line. I have no idea. So uh, yeah, I mean, I mean it's gonna be a good match. It'll be great, but uh, I'm not really feeling the build for this. It, it very much feels like the thing WWE has done was well. well it's this time of year. It is time to do X stipulation match. Let's book one. And you know what else too? And I, I'm and I'm not the only one because there's a lot of people who were thinking this. Brian Danielson wasn't even on this show. That guy's getting the world championship match against Swerve at Wembley. He wasn't even on this show at all. And what they did do was during the brawl at the end, Swerve hits the house call. They hit old Hangers music, and that bro runs in, and they're having a stare down. The place is going nuts, and they get separated. And I just sat there thinking, you know, the match everybody wants. They've been talking about it for weeks now. They want Hangman and Swerve at Wembley. And really, it's the easiest setup ever. You do blood and guts. The last guy for the heel team ends up being Hangman. It's Hangman and Swerve is the last two in. They finally get their hands on each other. They do a bunch of crazy shit, and Hangman finally beats Swerve. And then you have Hangman and Swerve set up for Wembley. But instead, they put together an Owen Hart you know, tournament, and they announced long in advance the winners are just getting the shot at Wembley. There's no surprises. And Brian Danielson won and then vanished. The same Brian Danielson that did interviews saying he doesn't want to be the champion... The same Brian Danielson that always loses the big one. I mean, I am not a big fan of the uh, the way they've set up Brian Danielson and Swerve and that match at Wembley. I mean, they should never have brought back Hangman. Hangman should have just Hangman should have come back at the end of Wembley, and you know Brian Danielson beats Swerve or whatever. Hangman screws Swerve, whatever, and then you do Hangman and Swerve it all out. I mean, there's a million things you could do, but. I'm, I'm not feeling this one, really, at all. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.